Hello and welcome to this week's comic chat. I'm Tanner. Uh, Chris is busy. He's getting ready. Uh, we're we're going to be in Orlando this weekend. At least some of us, some of us are. Uh, so they're getting ready for the convention in Orlando. Uh, I've got several books I've read this week. Uh, so let's 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 look at my list. Most everything's Marvel. I do have one Image book. So first up from Image, I have the Silver Coin number eight, and it, really everything else I read. The, the, there's a lot of tie-ins this week. So I've got Winter Soldier Devil's Reign and Devil's Reign number three. And then my other two books are Amazing Spider-Man and Mary Jane and Black Cat Beyond. So these these two books you have to read together, and these two books you have to read together. Um, you could read the main, like you could read Spider-Man without reading Mary Jane, and it wouldn't be a huge deal. Same thing, you could read Devil's Reign without Winter Soldier, and it wouldn't be a huge deal. Uh, but to read the others, you really need to know what's going on in the main book. Uh, so I, everything I read this week was, was really good. I liked it. I enjoyed everything um, so far. I do have some other books in my stack to read. Uh, I've got Invincible Red Sonia number this week is seven. Uh, that's my last book from this week. From last week, I still need to read Devil's Reign, Villains for Hire number one, as well as uh, Rush number three. I've got a handful of books from last week I still need to catch up on. One of those books that I did make some time for was the silver coin this is number eight uh this series has been fantastic uh every, every book it's it's an anthology so every book has been completely different uh the only consistency is this cursed coin and even what the coin does to people how it affects them is not necessarily consistent uh but this story is about a janitor in like a wall street office um i really like the the way the the, um, the book is laid out, it's nine panels on almost every page, and it, it kind of helps to build the tension of the story. Uh, so I, I really dig that. There's very few pages in this book that are not, like, just nine panels. Um, the, basically, the boss of this business uh, buys a coin collection, and this cursed coin is a part of the collection. Uh, the janitor sees it, and it, he just, it, it, it drives him crazy, really. Um, the, 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 like I said, the, the way it's drawn, the way the panels are laid up, really drives the tension. Um, you know, it, it, horror comic books aren't necessarily scary, uh, but there are ways that you can make it uneasy feeling and i think this book successfully achieves that uh like i said i love this whole series it's probably one of my favorite series i've been reading um and they're gonna keep it going so i, I really this is one book that i highly recommend that I, i'll recommend to anybody tell blue in the face just because it, it does such a fantastic job um each story is super unique and you can jump in absolutely anywhere you don't have to track down all the back issues to understand what's going on all you have to know is that the coin is cursed so uh good read a silver coin number eight that came out last week i think number nine might have been on it's been on foc here recently but i don't remember exactly which week uh so yeah be sure to to be picking up that uh before i go on to my next stuff what are you guys reading uh let me know in the comments. Let me know what you any recommendations, what you think I should be reading, and I'll definitely try and check some of this stuff out. And because we want to talk about it with you guys, so let me know in the comments what you guys are reading. We'll try and take, talk about it maybe next week. Uh, don't forget about our podcast, Brain and I for sure. Maybe Michael will be here tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Central. We'll be talking about all things nerdy, uh, so you don't want to miss out on that. And then of course Friday morning at 11 a.m. Central we have our weekly live sale brandon and i have tons of goodies for you so yeah we, we have plenty of content be sure you're watching here on twitch if you want to which i call this stuff out live for uh, if, if you don't catch it live that's fine we put a lot of it on youtube so subscribe to our youtube channel you can see the comic chat you can see the podcast we also do our final order cut off top 10 countdown every week in that video we give away uh multiple books every week 
to for more details on how you can enter to win. Be sure to go subscribe to our YouTube and watch those final word cut off videos. Uh, we appreciate every little bit of support we can get from you guys. So moving on, I'm going to go to my next uh, set of books. This is Devil's Reign. Um, the the important one is the, the main book. So that's Devil's Reign 3. This is 3 of 6. Uh, this story is about... Uh, basically, Kingpin has made it illegal to be a masked superhero in New York. And they're trying to figure out how they can, they com they can combat this. So Luke Cage, since he's never had any sort of secret identity, he's running for mayor. It's an election year in New York. Um, and they're trying, they're going to try and win legitimately and get Kingpin booted out of office. So while he's running the campaign, uh, Captain America, Daredevil, Miles Morales, and a few others, they're trying to fight back as best they can. Um, they realize that Luke isn't doing the greatest in the polls, uh, and that's because of Zebediah... What's his name? Uh, yeah. Zebediah Kilgrave. He is um, manipulating the populace of New York to support Kingpin. So uh, Jessica Jones kind of feels that that power, that presence, um, and they, they suspect him being involved. So they're going to go to City Hall and try and get evidence of this so they can bring him down. So uh, that's how they're taking the fight to Kingpin. You know, Luke Cage is still trying to, to legitimately win the race. They're there to try and get evidence, and uh, Doc Ock and his Superior Four show up. Which this is this is one complaint I've had about Devil's Reign, even though I've really enjoyed it. Is it got books got super delayed, and now I think they're publishing out of order. So I think this one got delayed further than it should have been because this, I believe, should have been the first appearance of the Superior Four. And then Superior Four number one, I think, should have come out after this. But because of various delay reasons, it was the other way around. Uh, so the Superior Four show up and kind of kick the Avengers' butts. And they smash up Iron Man, which Iron Man was originally going to be running for um, mayor. And then they decided that it would be a better, it would look better for Luke Cage to do it since he's never been a a, a masked superhero. Uh, well, we find out that this Iron Man is Chameleon in disguise. Uh, he's been hired by Oct to try and run for mayor, and since Octavius cannot win with that plan, he goes to Plan B, which is to save the city. And they go to he goes to smash and stuff. So th that's about where that part of the story ends. And we see uh, f right there at the end, I think something big happens here. I don't, we don't know how big until the next issue, uh, but something happens to Foggy at the very, very end, and it kind of leaves us with a mystery. We don't know if he's dead or if he's just seriously injured. Um, but I, we will find out next issue. This co very possibly could have been the death of Foggy. So, Devil's Reign, it's been really good. I, I, check it out. It's only issue three, so the, it shouldn't be too hard to, to track down the books. Uh, but it, it's been really good. I love Chip, Chip Cesarski. He's also written issues for Silver Coin. So yeah, there you go. If you like Zdarsky, be reading Devil's Reign. And to tie in with Devil's Reign, we have Devil's Reign Winter Soldier number one. This is going to be leading into Captain America number zero. It's just setting up that story. Um... It, it doesn't directly have anything to do with what's going on in Devil's Reign, other than that we know Fisk has files on everybody. So Bucky is trying to get his file to kind of fill in some gaps from his uh, days when his memories were kind of being jacked with. So he, he breaks in. Uh, Kingpin is like sleepwalking around his own place and smashing up his own guards uh, because Kingpin is super freaked out about not being able to remember who Daredevil is. He can't even read the file. It just looks like blurs on the page. So 
uh, that's got his mind super messed up. But at the end of the day, uh, Bucky was able to steal the file. He reads through it, and he decides that he's not going to have peace until he uh, finds out who is behind this file. Because this file has information on Bucky since before he was even a part of the Winter Soldier, all the way back to his childhood. Um, so he is his his goal now going into Captain America number zero is to figure out who is behind this file that's been been kept on him. So it's pretty cool. I like the Winter Soldier as a character. Um, so I, I, I may end up checking out Captain America number zero. We'll see. Um, see if I can fit it into my reading schedule there. And my next, it's probably, it's going to be a short show today. Um, not much to talk about without Chris being here with me, but my next two books were ASM 87 and Mary Kane, Mary Jane Black Cat number one. So ASM 87 is mostly about Peter, uh, Captain America and Felicia are training Pete to kind of get him back on his feet. So that's what most of the issue is about. They're, um, they're just working to try and get Pete back to back to being Spider-Man so he doesn't hurt himself even worse when he goes out there not being ready. Um, we do get to see a few scenes with Ben. Uh, when we left off the last issue, they were taking him to get his, his memory wiped again. And it alluded to that it could have some weird effects if you do it too often or incorrectly. So, uh, yeah, um, we do see that Ben cannot remember. Um, he, he doesn't remember the whole with great power comes great responsibility thing. So that could lead up to some trouble uh, between the two Spider-Mans come come near issues so uh, especially as we see uh, I'm assuming I don't have any facts to back this up but I'm assuming Spider-Man number one is going to be back with uh, Pete so we have uh, like 13-ish uh, more issues before we get there so um, yeah hopefully all that stuff gets sorted out and we get Pete back. But I I, I want to keep Ben around, too, so I, I want to see Ben with his own book. Uh, but right there at the end, um, Mary Jane gets back to her apartment from what they do in Black Cat, Mary Jane, Beyond. So this is, this is an issue. This last page in ASM will make more sense after you read this book. Um, but Mary Jane gets to there, and uh, Janine is sitting there waiting on her with the hard drive that Ben swiped from beyond. So, uh, yeah, she's fixing to get real Spider-Man on the case, and I think things that beyond are fixing to start to unravel, especially as we get closer to uh, Queen Goblin and her first appearance. So, uh, as always, I'm loving the Beyond story. Uh, the Spider-Man has been really good. And it, we're just getting to that climax of the story. Um, Mary Jane Black Cat and Beyond is... Uh, it, it's really just a little side story where uh, the Hood shows up. He's been following Felicia uh, and, you know, that knows that she's been visiting someone in the hospital. So he shows up to that hospital room at gunpoint with Mary Jane and Pete in there and tells Felicia to, you're going to find my Hood or I'm going to shoot this guy is basically what that comes down to. So uh, she tricks him into thinking Mary Jane is a part of her crew. So the, the two ladies go off to, they go on this little adventure to get back his hood. Like I said, it's really just a side story. Um, nothing too important to what Beyond is doing, I don't think. Um, but the... the this is what Mary Jane is doing when she shows back up at her apartment at the end of ASM, and it explains why she's in the black cat suit. So uh, it was it was a fun read, um, but like I said, it's not 
overly important to what is going on in the Beyond story. Uh, so that's everything I've read this week. Uh, I enjoyed everything. Uh, there was a ton, a ton of books come out this week. Uh, hope you guys are able to pick up something. Uh, like I said earlier in the show, don't forget to join us tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Central, for our weekly podcast. It will for sure be Brandon and I, and uh, we might get Mike Lynn on the show also. So uh, be sure to join us there. It's a ton of fun. It's even more fun when we have lots of you guys hanging out with us. So thanks for watching today, and we will see you tomorrow.